Today we're looking at Shorter Catechism, question 29. And the question is, how are we made partakers of the redemption purchased by Christ? Answer, we are made partakers of the redemption purchased by Christ by the effectual application of it to us by his Holy Spirit. Now there is a ton of stuff that can be unpacked in this little question here. In fact, if you look at the larger catechism, there's probably eight to nine questions that parallel with questions 29 and 30. But since we are limited to time, I knew I had to sum it up in a couple of points. And so as I was preparing this lesson, I thought, okay, there are two parts in the answer that I want us to focus on. The words redemption purchased and then the words effectual application. But then the more that I thought about it, the more I came to realize that these two points can easily be summed up in one grand point. Now, what do I mean by that? First, let's look at the words effectual application by the Spirit. Webster defines effectual as, quote, producing an effect or the effect desired or intended or having adequate power or force to produce the effect, unquote. So what is the desired effect here? It's salvation. It's redemption. But who applies it according to this answer? God does, especially the work of the person of the Holy Spirit. Now, folks, let this sink into your mind. You do not apply salvation to yourself. It is solely the work of God. God is not sitting around twiddling his thumbs, if he had thumbs, anxiously waiting for people to get their act together to apply a salvation that would not otherwise happen if they did not act. That is absolute nonsense. Scripture states over and over and over again that your salvation comes to you because it is God, not you, who makes it effectual. In John chapter 6, we read, quote, that the Jews grumbled about Jesus because he said, I am the bread that come, came down from heaven. And they said, is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How does he now say, I have come down from heaven? And Jesus answered them, do not grumble among yourselves, for no one can come to me unless the father who sent me draws him, and I will raise him up on the last day. You cannot come to Christ unless the Father allows it. But people argue, yeah, but the Father draws everyone, right? And then at that point, you've got to make a choice. Nope. If you read the verses prior to what I just read, what was it that Jesus said that got them grumbling to start with? Verse 35, Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall, not, shall never thirst. But I said to you that you have seen me and yet do not believe. All that the Father gives me will come to me, and whoever comes to me I will never cast out. For I have come down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I shall lose nothing of all that he has given me, but raise it up on the last day. You will not come to Christ unless the Father gives you to Christ. And since not everyone is going to come to Christ, then it must be because the Father has not drawn everyone. Well, Jason, this sounds like you're arguing that God chooses who to save and who not to save. Yes, that's exactly what I'm saying. Glad you're catching on. Again, we read in John chapter 10 that the Jews gathered around him and said to him, How long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Christ, tell us plainly. And Jesus answered them, I told you and you do not believe. Do you see the parallel here with John chapter 6? There he said, if you have seen me and yet do not believe. Here he is saying, I have told you plainly that I am the Christ, and yet you still not, do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name bear witness about me, but you do not believe because you are not among my sheep. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they will never perish and no one will snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me, again, see the parallel with John uh, 6. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all and no one is able to snatch them out of the Father's hand. I and the Father are one. And if you'll notice, this is why the larger catechism in unfolding this section of the shorter in parallel goes into questions about election and the visible and invisible church. This is why they did it, because our Reformed forefathers rightly understood that the scripture teaches 
that it is God, not man, who effectuates salvation. And so naturally the question then comes up of, well, who exactly gets in on the gift? But having now established that, you can see why the wording of effectual application necessarily flows from the wording of redemption purchased. In the larger catechism's parallel question, the word used there instead of purchased is procured. Procure means to obtain, to acquire, to effect. Friends, Jesus did not die for a hypothetical salvation. He did not die merely to make salvation possible if only we determined to make it effectual. Jesus did not go to the cross thinking, well, I sure hope this works. It is utter nonsense. Christ not only intended to redeem us, he actually did it. When on the cross, he did not cry out, well, I got it started, now it's up to you. Rather, he cried out, it is finished. Father, the work that you have assigned for me to do to save those whom you have chosen and have given to me is complete. It has been procured. It has been obtained. It is guaranteed. Matthew 1, 21, she that is Mary will bear a son. And you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Hebrews 9, 12, Jesus entered once for all into the holy places, not by means of the blood of goats and calves, but by means of his own blood, thus securing an eternal redemption. You remember what we saw in John 10, 26? You do not believe because you are not of my sheep. Well, if we go just a few verses up in John chapter 10, verse 14, I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me, just as the Father knows me and I know the Father, and I lay my life down for the sheep. Now I have other sheep that are not of this fold. I must bring them also. Not I might, but I must. And they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock and one shepherd. Friends, redemption is not obtained and secured by our faith. Faith is the instrument by which you receive the gift of salvation. But it is Christ, the good shepherd, who obtained and secured that salvation. Redemption is certainly applied and effectually communicated to all those for whom Christ hath purchased it, who are in time by the Holy Ghost and able to believe in Christ according to the gospel, says our larger catechism. And next week we will look at how specifically the Holy Spirit applies that. That includes our lesson. Now if you would please stand as we now recite the Ten Commandments.